Hey, in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over the virtual camera, also known as the VCam. Okay, so first things first, you're going to need to download your VCam. Now, there are two different versions out there. There is the ActionScript 2 version and the ActionScript 3 version. And I've provided download links for both in the video description. So you can go and download them, open them up, and have a go yourself. Okay, so I've gone ahead and downloaded the ActionScript 3 VCam and I'm just going to make a new layer to use it with and I'd always advise as a, a starter tip always put your VCam layer right at the top because it makes organizing a lot easier so I'm just going to call it VCam I'm going to drag it out onto the stage okay so for those unfamiliar with VCams what it is it's basically just a movie clip with some action script inside it and the action script allows the movie clip to become the camera so wherever you drag this on the stage, that's what will be rendered out when you export Flash. And you can tween it around, you can just use it for dynamic camera angles. And one of the main reasons it was invented was just for the sort of sheer simplicity of directing your scenes. So imagine you've got a really complicated scene with loads of different symbols being animated. If you want to move the camera, originally you'd have to move all of it individually. Now with the VCam you can just tween it around the stage and get some really nice camera shots and smooth movements without any hassle. Okay so, but I've run into a bit of a problem here because my VCam is a different shape to my stage and this is going to be a problem because if I render this out now it's all stretched because the aspect ratios don't match up. So first things first I'm going to have to open up the movie clip of the VCam and you'll notice here there is an action script layer and there is a layer for the graphics. So I'm just going to select, select the graphics and go to properties. Now my stage size is 800 by 450 and my VCam is only 550 by 400 which is the default stage size for flash. So I'm just going to have to match them up. So I'm going to change this to 800 and this to 450. And you'll notice it's a little bit out of alignment so I'm just going to use the align function and click these two buttons and it's now dead center. Okay, so you'll notice that there's a few little accessories on this VCam including this crosshair and this little color palette. Uh, these aren't hugely necessary, they're just little things to help you along. And one of the great things about VCams is they're fully customizable so you can add whatever you want onto them to help you. You know, you can add resolutions on, you can add text, pointers, anything like that. And you'll also notice that you can see these accessories now but when you export it you can't because they're invisible in the script and I'll get back to that a bit later actually okay so I'm gonna show you how the VCam works so I'm just gonna make about 60 frames and I'm gonna animate the camera I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna add a classic tween to my camera I'm gonna add a simple tween Okay, so I'm just going to have the camera zoom out of these objects. So I'm going to have to scale the VCam. Now it's a really important part of using the VCam. Whenever you need to scale it, always hold down shift when you do it. And this is what will happen. And you'll notice it's always maintaining the aspect ratio and this is hugely important. If you scale it without holding down shift, you'll get this and it'll start changing shape. And this will completely ruin the picture because it will get squashed and stretched. So always make sure you hold down shift when you're scaling. Alright, great. So I'm just going to have it start off small and then get larger. In other words, zoom out. Alright, let's test it out. Alright, so great, it's working. But looking at this now, it kind of abruptly zooms out. And it's not very smooth, so there's something I can do about that. I'm just going to click anywhere on the tween and go to properties. Now I want it to sort of slow down as the camera pulls out so I'm going to use easing function and put about, I'm going to, I'll crank it up to 100. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to test it again and notice how it slows down towards the end and it's quite a nice movement because it slows down and it's quite nice and smooth. Now equally you can do the opposite so I can have it slow down at the start and then gradually get faster just like this. Also quite a nice smooth movement. But I can also combine both of these. So I'm going to put that back to zero. I'm going to put a keyframe roughly in the middle. 
and then I'm going to click the first half, put it to minus 100, and then click the second half and put it at 100. Let's test this out. So as you can see, it slows down at the start, it gets a bit faster in the middle, and then it slows down at the end. Now I've used this technique in quite a lot of my animations because it's quite a nice smooth camera movement and it's great for zooming between characters and just generally any sort of camera movement really it works quite well. Also if you want to learn more about easing I've done a whole tutorial on it so you can click the annotation and have a look at the full tutorial. Okay so we're pretty much done with this tutorial but there's one more thing I want to show you so I'm just going to go to the last frame. Now, remember how I said that these accessories don't appear when you export Flash because of the code? Now, you can actually modify the code so they do appear, and this can become handy if you want to show stuff like watermarks. So, I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to click on the action script keyframe and go on actions. Now, for both the action script 3 and action script 2, you should see a line fairly close to the top of the script something along the lines of this, visible equal false. All you have to do is change false to true. And if I export this now, you can see that the accessories are now visible. So what you can do now is, if you want to add a watermark for your YouTube page or your company, you can. So I'm just going to delete these, because obviously you don't want to see these. And I'll make a new layer and I'm just going to add an example watermark. Uh, I think I'll just add a little smiley face. And there it is, your watermark on your animation. And if you decide, hang on a minute, I don't actually want to put a watermark on, all you need to do is go back on the action script keyframe, go back on actions, and just change this back to false. And there you go, it's invisible again. Okay, so I hope you found this tutorial useful. And I think the main thing to take away from this is don't be afraid to be adventurous with your camera angles with a VCam. You know, add some rotations in there, whatever you want, as long as it looks nice. And good luck with using it. Okay, so if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe. Also, if you want to leave a suggestion for a future tutorial, just drop me a comment in the comment section below or send me a message and I'll get back to you. Thanks.